All right, shall we begin? I'll try to enunciate, I'll try to read well, and if you see me all of a sudden type something on the computer, it's because what I'm reading from you, what I'm reading to you from, is essentially my first draft. So, if I find a mistake, or find something that doesn't make sense, I'll try not to go back and type it right then and there, but um, sometimes I can't help myself. My inner editor uh, just drives me crazy. I will begin. Where we are at is Carrie has left Annie and Professor Arrakis sitting on the sofa. And the first person to speak was Professor Arrakis. And what she says that interrupts Annie's train of thought is, you were surprised. Annie looks straight ahead. Yes. She turned just enough to see the professor. I was. She finally shifted her body so that she wasn't uncomfortable looking at the instructor. I wasn't expecting to hear him nearly tell Emma that he wasn't going to dance with her. Deanna. He was going to say more than that. He was about to tell her that he wasn't planning on dancing with anyone but you. Deanna slid around so she was resting between the back and the arm of the sofa. He's changed. Yes, he has. She looked for him out on the dance floor, then decided she trusted him enough that it wasn't necessary to keep an eye on him. This is Deanna, quite a lot after his accident a couple of weeks ago. She looked over her shoulder also, searching for Emma and him. His night in the hospital must have had a profound effect upon him. Annie didn't want to speak of that night in the hospital. She didn't want to speak of her anger at him, of her after-hours apology, and of the moments she spent in the near dark watching him sleep. Though she wanted to talk, he's so different tonight. Carrie's always been attentive, but tonight he's noticed so many small things. She looked off to her right, toward the exit into the east hallway. He's been so complimentary, telling me I'm lovely, I'm beautiful. You're waiting to hear something else, aren't you? Her eyes flickered over the seer. Yes. Deanna nodded. Perhaps she turned to watch the students dancing once more. He finally feels he's worthy of giving you love. Annie's attention snapped back to Deanna, her eyes filled with curiosity and intent. She knew it wasn't an accident that the professor spoke nearly the same words she'd spoken to Carrie that night in the hospital, telling him that he was worthy of her love and deserved all that she felt for him. What do you know, professor? Deanna slowly turned to face Annie, her dark eyes guarded. What do you think I know, Annie? You saw what happened in the hospital the night he was hurt, didn't you? She didn't bother trying to obfuscate. Yes. When? A few nights before. So you know what I said to him, and I have an inkling of what he felt afterwards, if that's what you're going to ask. What, Professor? Annie almost reached for Deanna's hand to take it, to perhaps infuse a bit of her need into the seer so that she would talk of her visions. What did you see? What do you know? Deanna fixed Annie with an intense stare. Whatever I know, I can't say. You know this. You know how visions work. The moment you talk about the vision, particularly to the person for whom the vision pertains, the outcome can be affected, sometimes severely. This is Annie. Kerry talked about the vision he had in Memories End the first time. Did we talk about yours? Deanna felt the blush rush across Annie's cheek. No, we didn't, because you, were the only, you weren't the only one in that vision. Annie was almost shaking, but forced herself to remain still. How do you know that one? I have my ways. She returned to the subject at hand. At least Annie continued to press her on those orientation day events at memory's end. Whatever I know about the future events in your relationship with Carrie, I can't ever mention a word to either him or you. There's too much of a possibility that by telling you what I've seen, that you'll try too hard to make them happen. And then you know what happens. She nodded. They might not. 
Yes. Visions are funny. You try to make one happen and it doesn't. You try to prevent one from occurring and it happens despite your best efforts. She turned and watched the happenings on the dance floor. Carrie would probably say it has something to do with quantum realities and how trying to actualize the event forces an opposing event. She shrugged. I've seen things, yes. Beyond that, there's very little I can say. Because of her mother's sight, Annie was well aware of how tricky visions were. She also knew of the few times when the rules didn't work, just as Professor Arrakis mentioned. My mother saw Carrie coming to Salem and told me, and that still happened. Didn't you tell me that she also checked with her friends in the Foundation first to see if that was true before mentioning it to you? Yes. Then there was no violation of cause or effect. She saw him going to Salem. She checked with the Foundation people and discovered he was selected for admission. Nothing she said to you would change that fact. Deanna reached out and touched Annie's left hand. But she knew what would happen when she told you. Annie nodded slowly. I decided to come to Salem. Yes. She changed your outcome, which was directly linked to her vision. But nothing she said or did would affect Carrie directly because he was never aware of your mother's vision. There wasn't anything Annie could do. Under no circumstances would Professor Arrakis tell her anything useful. She wanted to know so much. When would Carrie remember their dreams? When would he know what they really meant to each other? More importantly, when would he say that he loved her? Was it happening tonight? Tomorrow? When?